Okay, welcome to another Orbiter Spaceflight Simulator video. And this video is going to be a continuation in the video that I'm doing where we're trying to go from Wide Awake International on Earth to dock with the ICV. And the ICV is already in orbit around Earth. And it's pretty much a vessel that's used for interplanetary flight. Uh, it's not really an Earth-bound vessel, so you can't land with it or even launch it. So let's go ahead and switch camera views here and jump back into the flight. Let me unpause the video, or unpause the uh, simulation. So in the last video, I did the Transex setup and burn. That would allow us to go from our current position, which is an altitude of about 215 kilometers, to raise the other side of our orbit out so that we would be at the same height as the target vessel, but we also want to make sure that we arrive at the same time that it's going to be passing a specific point in space. Now, one thing I didn't take into consideration at all was day and night, so we won't worry about that. So I need to warp time forward to get around to the other side and then do a... Uh, sometimes I refer to it as a braking maneuver because what, I'm, what I have to do is make my velocity match the velocity of the other vessel but in this case it's not a braking maneuver so much as we're actually going to be increasing our velocity when we get there because notice that this side of our orbit is lower than that side so when i get around to this side i'm actually going to be adding in velocity so that my velocity will match the velocity of the icv now hopefully if i'm looking here it looks like we're on the night side so Hopefully we'll be, it'll be daytime when we get over there. Let me look. Map. Zoom out a little bit. Uh, yeah, because we're basically right here at night, so it should be should be daytime. That'll be nice. Okay, before I warp time forward, uh, it's never a bad idea to start setting up your frequency stuff in advance. So let's bring up Control-I, and we'll go Vessel. ICV is already selected, so let's make this larger. And let me select my comm nav. And for navigation one, we'll put in the long range if it has one. Yes, it does, 117.50. So let me make that change, 117.50. That'll be the long range. But then when we get there, we need to be able to dock. So I have to pick one of these. They're all free. There's nothing docked to it right now. And I actually don't know which is which uh, as far as if there's any particular docking port that is preferable for aesthetic reasons so I'm just gonna pick any of them um, hmm but there's no frequencies that's weird okay I don't actually understand that <laughs> maybe maybe they're all set to 11750 I don't know we'll find out. See, normally, like, if you pick, let's say the, uh, do we have the ISS in this scenario? No, we don't. Well, normally, each docking port has its own frequency associated with it, but I guess the author chose not to do that. All right, so I'm going to switch the HUD over to or, uh, docking HUD, and that will allow me to track how close or how far I am from the target. And again, when I get there, I'm going to have to, you know, increase my velocity by 99 meters a second or about 100 meters a second. So let's just go ahead and warp time forward and get over there. We can go forward with about 100 at first. I do want to make sure that I keep track of the distance. Let me do this. I don't really need Transex anymore, so let me bring up Docking MFD. Yeah, this will be more useful. That way... If this stuff isn't in view, I can still see the distance to the vessel over here in the docking MFD. I'm not actually sure how I'm going to dock once I get there, though, if there's no frequencies on any of the docking ports. I mean, you don't have to have them uh, if you have the, the right visual equipment set up on the, on the docking port and your craft has... Um, sort of one of those like survey pieces of equipment i can't remember what that's called off the top of my head a sexton i think it's called uh, yeah, but anyway if you have something like that you can actually dock without instrumentation i've done it 
uh, but the XR2 doesn't have any of that, and I doubt the ICV does either. So basically, it's the same way that you dock the limb to the uh, the Apollo uh, module. That you know they they didn't have they didn't use this type of equipment. In fact, I I mean this is probably all fictional here, but I mean they don't use this type of equipment like the space shuttle does when it docks to the ISS. The limb and the Apollo module they would just use these visual tools inside the vessels and it's actually not hard at all surprisingly all right so we're 43 kilometers out let me go back to real time rotation let's get rotated so that we're facing the direction of the of the vessel and let me open the retro doors because even though i'm going to be speeding up i'm still I'm I'm going around the earth essentially backwards so I going I'm going to need to use the retro engines to increase my velocity otherwise I could turn around the other way let me just go ahead and do that cuz I, I rarely do that I almost always face this direction when I when I do these uh rendezvous maneuvers so let me change it up a little bit I think I could see the flashing lights of the ICV out there I'm not sure let's go ahead and turn around I need to be facing. Did I miss it? I'm looking for the reverse bullseye, the reverse velocity vector. Did I miss it? I don't remember missing it. But I don't have a whole lot of time to figure this out. Okay, I guess I'm going to be using the. But did I really just not go around far enough? gonna have to waste a lot of translation here I guess I just didn't go around far enough I thought I, I thought I went around and missed it and kept going but apparently not oh, there it is that seems like a really weird angle though huh I guess maybe by the time I come around it'll it'll be more grade ish but it just seems like it's at such a weird position okay uh, 100 meters a second I probably don't really need to use burn time calculator to figure that out but I will just to be a little more accurate so I want to know how long is it going to take me to add in an additional 100 meters per second so we'll put in that number 100.2 and it's gonna take me basically 200 meters of distance so what what I'm saying is that when my distance here is down to 200 meters, that's when I want to engage the engines. But I don't like to get right up on top of the thing before I stop. So we'll start it a little bit early, uh, at least probably like a kilometer. Just let me warp time forward a little bit more. Now, if you really wanted to, you'd be, you know, be more careful about things. You could start your uh start changing your velocity when you're you know five kilometers or even 10 kilometers out and then have a more slower approach that would be the safer saner thing to do but you know in fictional orbiter scenarios I, it's you know a little more interesting i think to kind of push yourself right up to the vessel it should be right behind me yeah you can see it's there and it's approaching my location so when I'm, you know, again, I only need 200 meters if I if I did the burn perfectly. So we'll get really close to it. And we can either burn manually or there's a burn button here. Here it is. So if I have my finger on here ready to go, then we can get really close to it. 4,000. So it's four kilometers out. Still wondering how I'm going to dock. 3,000. Hmm. So two kilometers, we need 200 meters. So getting really 2, close. 2,000. Let me pause for one second. One of the other reasons that you would want to begin your braking earlier, you'll notice that when I do my burn, I'm going to be thrusting 
lots of gas and other stuff, and it's going to be going directly toward that vessel. And that's probably not a good thing, uh, especially as it gets closer. We would basically be spraying this with all kinds of exhaust. So really, in terms of realism, you would want to have your velocity difference already you know, zeroed out so that you're only ever thrusting in a direction that would be away from this vessel. So if I'm using translation to, to bring myself in closer, I want to translate this way so that all the gases are going away from the vessel. But again, we don't really, I don't concern myself with things like that in orbiter, but it's just a point. Okay. And we'll burn here. Just another... Actually, I started that a little sooner than I wanted to. But yeah, you can see, you know, we're just uh, 600 meters out. And I was going to start it at 500 meters, but when I unpaused, I saw the numbers ticking by quickly and panicked. Translation. Okay, so now I will translate a little bit this way, because I can see that I'm moving slightly away from it. And now I'm moving slightly towards it. Rotation. So now I'll rotate around so I can see it and get some idea of how in the heck I'm going to rendezvous with a, or rather dock, how I'm going to dock with a vessel that has no frequencies for its docking ports, apparently. Okay, boy that is a good looking vehicle. All right, let me bring up control I again. Um, am I sure this thing has no No frequencies. Weird. Okay. So we have five docking ports. What is XR2? Oh, this is just me. That's my bustle. That's my cargo bay. Payload. One seventeen fifty. Hmm. Well. Translation. Rotation. Translation. You translate over this way. Be a lot of guesswork involved here because without some frequency information I mean I don't know how to yaw how to pitch how to roll I don't know how close I am to the docking port rotation translation Let me move closer getting closer just do a visual look Visually, I think that's a docking port there. And I know there's one on the front of it, I remember, pretty sure. Maybe if I get to the one in the front, that'll probably be the easiest. Now, I do wonder if the ICB has any uh, like ports that have to be opened and closed, like the XR2. You know, when you get up to dock, you have to open the, the nose. In fact, I should probably do that while I'm thinking about it. I think it's control K. Yeah. Five hundred information. APU fuel seventy percent. All right, let me warp time four getting closer. Four hundred. See, I think that's a docking port up there. One down there. I wonder if those would actually be easier to just, you know, eyeball it. No, that'll be the easiest one, I think. Okay. Rotation. Translation. See, to 
me that was closed. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Rotation. Translation. Is that a docking port? Now I'm not even sure. Rotation. Translation. See, I don't feel lined up at all. I feel like I'm way yawed off. Rotation. Translation. Rotation. And I, I can't. I have no way to know. Translation. Hmm. See, I don't think the XR2 has. Yeah, and the virtual cockpit. It doesn't have any of that visualization stuff that would allow you to just look at. All right. I don't think there's anything I have to open there. Rotation. Not absolutely sure. I feel like I need to rotate a little this way. This is all by feel because I can't. I have no instrumentation that's doing me any good at all. Although I guess this at least gives me gives me distance, but it gives me the distance to the center of the ICV, not to the port. Translation. I feel like I need to come up. Oh man. The only way I think I could have any chance at this is to look outside, which is completely cheating. I'm actually lined up a little better than I thought I would be. Rotation. Translation. Too low. This feels so much like cheating right now. To be to have to look outside, I just that's not at all the way flying works. But I guess in some sense you could say, well, if you had an external camera mounted outside, then it's not exactly cheating, but it's cheating. Rotation. Translation. Rotation. Okay, that feels about right. Still a little low. Translation. I'm never going to get this. Rotation. Translation. Rotation. Ugh. Rotation. Translation. Rotation. Translation. Yeah, not a chance. There is no way. No way. Rotation. Translation. This is, I wonder if I can look down, see the front of the ship, I guess not. 100. 100? What? 100 meters from what? Oh, man. I, I didn't even, I didn't realize this ship didn't have any, like, in, uh, in, uh, frequencies for the port. And I know the author watches my videos from time to time from time to time at least so if he sees this he'll probably be like you're an idiot you're missing this <laughs> it's like right there come on uh wait wait I'm way off rotation 100 translation Oh my gosh, this is impossible with just looking at external cameras. Alright. Maybe if I do, and plus the other thing I don't like about this type of thing is when I look at other people's videos and they're constantly swiping the camera around, it drives me insane. I will not watch their video. Rotation. So I'm, but I have to kind of do that here.
translation. Yeah, this is not gonna work. All right, I'm gonna call that the end of this part, and I'm going to RTFM between videos. Rotation translation. Contact. I, oh, never mind. There it is. Got it. I don't... I, that's so unsatisfying. Alright, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to end this part of the video, because I've, I've now made it, quote-unquote. If I can find something in the manual that tells me how the docking on this is supposed to work, then I'll make another part where I come back, I'll undock from this one, this port, and I'll go around, say, to the top or the bottom and dock to one of the other docking ports and do it the right, do it right. If not, if I can't find anything like that, then that will be the end of this series. But anyway, we did make it successfully, albeit a bit of a hodgepodge type of thing, but we're here. So if you like this video, like it. And if you didn't, that's fine. Very thick skin. Hit the don't like button. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. So you can be notified when I upload new Orbiter videos. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next mission.